hello hello and welcome back to Rebirth with Music Kiki. I am Melissa Jimenez, the general manager of Music Kiki. And for those of you joining us for the very first time today, congratulations, you're going to learn so much. <laughs> and thank you for coming, of course. And today, we are speaking with Indie Gospel Artist Manager, Afia Cunningham of Aspire Agency, as we explore the relationship between artist and manager. So, Afia, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome, and I'm very happy and excited to be here. And we are very happy and excited to have you. <laughs> Loving the merch branding. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much, thanks. <laughs> And seeing all these gospel artists doing all these funky branding. Yeah, now, yeah. Like, yeah, gotta get me one of that. Gotta one get one branded, that, one yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry, <laughs> I got you. <laughs> so tell us more about yourself and tell us about Aspire Agency, of course. No problem. Well, my name is Afia Cunningham. I am the CEO and the founder of Aspire Agency, which is a gospel artist management and consultancy company. Um, Aspire Agency believes that once it is we share information and education about the business aspect of the music industry it will help because well artists navigate better within the gospel music industry or the music industry on a whole mm -hmm. yeah so i'm always fascinated to learn more about the names of companies and the meanings and stuff behind right. it so how did you come up with a spy agency, but prior to just niche and down to artist management and consultancy, before we did a lot of services. And these services became the acronym for the, the name of the business, Aspire. Mm -hmm. So the A is artist management, the S, stage management, P, promotions, I, image consultancy, R, reservations and bookings of venues, and E, event management. So all those were services that fell under Aspire Agency. And we just took the first of each and Aspire came about. <laughs> right, right. So you figure the words out first, so you figure the word Aspire and then Aspire words. I sat one day and I was thinking about the services that I already provided. And being an English major and love, loving to play with words and stuff like that, Aspire came about in like five minutes. <laughs> five minutes, you say, you know. <laughs> yep. Listen. Yep. Listen. We have the music TV team, we have the marketing team, and we will sit down for a whole day, two days, oh, three days for the week and try to figure out what are we going to name that program? Or what are we going to name this? Thing? Yes, I'll contact us. Why you not yourself? Let me, let me type my notes <laughs> one time. Call a fear. That's when no problem. We have to name programs. Yes. No problem. No all problem right. at all. Thanks, sir. <laughs> no you can tell us in the laugh. <laughs> So, so how did you get started in artist management and all? Well, before I became an artist manager, I was a booking agent. And I tend to say that I kind of fell into it. So let's backtrack a little bit. Before I even knew that I had something like artist management or all of this happening, I am the lead drummer. And at the point in time, I was the public relations officer of the Polar Spain Pathfinder Band. So I'm a snare drummer, right? And in 2014, the band needed to raise funds to go on a mission trip to, um, I, I believe it was St. Martin, St. Martin at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And we came up with the idea of having a gospel concert to raise funds. Now the, the band, they never had a concert before. But at that point in time, um, I was listening to um, a popular radio station and uh, there was this gospel artist that I just loved, which was Jonathan McReynolds. And I randomly suggested at one of the executive meetings that we should have got Jonathan McReynolds come to Trinidad and host our event, you know, be the main, the main act for our event. And, it was, and I say random because within our church and the band and stuff, like, it, was, it just was never done before. Long story short, they agreed, he came. And um, the event was a huge success. The band got to go to St. Martin. We got to teach the younger children music and stuff like that. But coming back from St. Martin, because my contact number and uh, information was out there, attached to the event, persons were asking, well, who was this um, promoter of the, 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 um, the event? It was held at UESPEC. At UESPEC. And so they, they started contacting me, they started asking questions, and uh, 
I just found it so natural to start helping persons. And a lot of them were gospel artists, gospel promoters, gospel event coordinators. And uh, one day I saw Curtis Jordan on Facebook asking for assistance for his Trinidad leg of the Caribbean Gospel Music Tours. Mm -hmm. And I, with my first self, decided to say I will volunteer to, to, to be on the team to assist as well, since at that point in time I was already assisting everybody else. And on that day, uh, the Trinidad, uh, on, the, on the Trinidad leg, I remember it was at Faith Assembly, my duty was to more or less collect tickets. Right, it sounds easy. <laughs> so I was collecting tickets and probably doing a few other stuff. And I remember at the end of that event, that train that leg of the Caribbean Gospel Music Tour, he passed by and he was like, um, Afi, I'm going to contact this was the first time we met. Afi, mm -hmm. I'm going to contact you. I've been observing your work ethic during the evening and I and I need you as my booking agent. I did I honestly didn't take it on because he was on tour. He was supposed to go to the UK in the next two days and I was like, I'm not taking this on. <laughs> but he did contact me like a few days later and he did ask me to be his booking agent. So I told him that I'm going to think about it because I knew to myself I need to do my research first. I don't I don't know what a book, booking agent does. So he what just it asked is. you to be a booking agent without knowing that you're not a booking agent. You exactly. Could, uh, you could so connect. Connect, right? <laughs> so he probably just watched how it is I was dealing with persons at the event and getting things done, done or whatever. And um, I did my research and I said, well, one of my strengths is administrative duties, you know. And I said, okay, I will try to do it. I'll see, I would, I would do it. And I was really honest with him. I told him I didn't know anything, you know. And um, after a year of being his booking agent while simultaneously assisting persons with their gospel events, which would have made me network with a lot of other gospel artists. Persons kept asking, well, who is this person that is now doing Curtis Jordan's bookings? And who is this person helping out here? And, da, 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 da. and um, a year later, he asked me to be his artist manager. And then by then, persons would have known a fear, a fear. Mm -hmm. Um, honestly, between you and I, and well, everybody who will be viewing this, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of try to hide because at the point in time, I was very young. Right? I was very young and female, and I would have observed that it was a male-dominated industry. And um, when uh, I recognized that it was a gift because it became so easy to me, I, I said, I'm going to invest in it. So I decided to take a course at Roy Tech in public relations and more or less start taking courses when it came to booking agents and artist management and learning about the music business and the music industry and just started assisting and serving people. Mm -hmm. And then through serving persons, Aspire Agency was born. You know, because I'm gonna make it more official and, um, you know, try and serve and help as much gospel artists as possible. All right. Yeah. That, that, that. <laughs> yeah. And that is usually the story of most persons diving into this for the first time, especially as you say when they're young, mm -hmm. is that there's no school to go to. to yeah, there was no school. I looked. A, um, I looked. I looked. Manager. Yeah. So it's basically you have networking skills, you're able to manage your time effectively, and uh, you know, key. That's isn't key. very much a learn as you go on the fly. Kind it's an on the job. Kind of <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're your yeah. own OJT. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was so straight that persons were asking me questions, and I was like, well, wait. <laughs> I, I should be asking <laughs> questions, you know. But um, yeah, it's truly a blessing. And when I recognized I was a gift from God, honestly, I said, I have to, you know, they say that you need to take care of your gifts or else you could lose it. So I said, I'm going to start learning about it so that I can effectively and efficiently serve those who are coming my way. And I have to say from the person outside looking in, you are doing a really good job at that. Thanks. Because I did see the embryonic stages of Thanks. Aspire forming. And there are a few other companies and persons out there. I just, you know, troll their, um, their, their, their Instagrams and Facebooks right. when I see the companies pop up. And I was like, all right, let me see what you do. do it. Right. <laughs> and then just mark them for about a year, year and a half to see where the growth is at. Mm -hmm. And you, you definitely just blew wow. up and blossomed. And your content, your information is there. So that tells me that 
you're not just doing it on the fly, mm -hmm. but you're also willing to educate it's, yourself as you go along you need and to. grow, right? You need to. So, you need so to. those are really, really yeah. good traits. So Thanks so much. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> so, fast tracking now to to the this conversation of what is expected of managers mm -hmm. and even booking agents in this case. I'm very <laughs> glad that you distinguish the two. Right. Because oh a lovely Caribbean artist. <laughs> lovely. Like it Emphasis to be and, lovely. and I'm going full colloquial here. They like it to be the chief cook and bottle washer. <laughs> you know? I just to translate that into English for if it have anybody else outside watching. Right. They like you to do everything. <laughs> You must do everything for them, including be their counselor mm. and <laughs> their, their mm. assistant, mm -hmm. their manager, their agent, their everything. So how do you manage those expectations and what are the ideal responsibilities mm -hmm. that you put forth to them? Well, the thing is, like, um, one of my favorite pastors would say, he said it need to be hot. You need to be honest, open, and transparent. So <laughs> I, um, like I would have got, I would have got to, I have, I have, I was honest with myself first in being young and being female and having a lot of males, um, you know, request services from me and stuff like that. And I was saying, even though I'm within the gospel industry, I need to be very clear, I need to be very direct, I need to be very, um, I need to speak with clarity as to what it is I am able to do and what it is I'm not able to do. So when it comes to being a booking agent and becoming a manager, you need to be just that. You need to be honest with yourself first, be honest with the artist secondly, and be open with them and let them know that, okay, this is who I am. These are the services that I can provide. What is it, what is it that you would like? And then you, because of, because of your honesty with yourself, you're able to say if it is you can do it or not. Exactly, exactly. And, and so in terms of your choosing of an artist, right? Mm -hmm. What are some of the qualities and things that you look for? That's one. And how do you sort of manage that relationship over a year period in right. terms of setting out expectations? Well, one, um, I believe in alignment because when it says they come, one of the number one questions I ask is what is your, your vision? What is your vision? What is the mission for yourself? Because the vision is where you want to go and the mission is how you're going to get there. So I, I try to see if it aligns with my beliefs and what it is I am capable of doing. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the second thing I look for is very good music. You must have really, really good music. They must have that drive because there are artists as well who believe once they get a manager, then they can relax. Listen. They can <laughs> relax and all the works fall on the manager. All they need to do is appear at gigs and just do what says no. That's a big no-no. I look for that passion and that drive. I also look for commitment. I look for commitment because the music journey is not an easy one. It's not an easy one. And they are going to have challenges and difficulties along the way, but you need to know how to stay committed to that um, task, to that vision, to that um, road that you want to be on during those challenging times. So those are just a few key things that I do look for in a person when it comes to accepting them. There are very few persons that I work with, but those are the things that stand out the most to me. And as you say, very few persons you work with. What's the max amount of people that you work with? Two to three. Amen, hallelujah. Two to three. Hallelujah. You're singing music to my ears right now because yeah. I've come across some artist managers who uh, solo, doing it by themselves, so, yeah. and they're telling me, oh, I have six artists, I have 10 artists, I have 13 artists. I'm like, how, what, when, why, where, and how? how? Like, I know the amount of work that goes into Correct. even one, one. person. Correct. How the hell Correct. you know mm -hmm. <laughs> all of those yeah, persons? Yeah, I mean, that have to be that you're doing absolutely nothing. Like, you have no <laughs> life because when it is, I always say that when it is you have a, an artist, it's almost like if it is you're in a marriage or in a relationship because you really have to have their best interest at heart. And I'm not going to manage someone who I do not believe in. You know, you have to believe in that artist so that whatever opportunities and strength you see coming their way, you're able to maximize that on their behalf because you always want the best for your artist. 
character. Correct. I, I, I always tell people when the warning sign is, you see when they say they could do everything. Mm -hmm. and, Red flag. And, yeah, Red flag. and run in the next direction. Red no, no, flag. No, 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 no. <laughs> that, that's trouble. It's true. It's true. <laughs> so, so, so we just signed an agreement and... Melissa Jimenez is your artist. I don't know mm -hmm. what her stage name is there. It's Rita Jones or Rita Jones. Wow. I don't know, something. <laughs> you find something, right? So I'm sitting with you, and what is my, what is your plan for me? I'm, I, mm -hmm. I want to know what is your plan, plan for me for the year. How, how do you go about that? So that's something that I def definitely can do on my own. This has to be done with the, um, with the artist. So an artist's career plan must be constructed. Okay. And this artist's career plan is something that I am now trying to emphasize on within the gospel music industry because I'm an advocate for the artists seeing themselves as a business. And in being a business, Say that again. Say that again. I'm, an <laughs> I'm an advocate for artists seeing themselves as a business, right? Um, and in being a business, one of the most important documents that you would or can prepare is a business plan, right? Mm -hmm. So in becoming an artist, therefore, you being a, a business, then you need to also create a plan. Now that's called an artist career plan. And uh, I want to stick up in and make a differentiation between an artist and a talent. Because we have a lot of talent out here. We do have a lot of artists <laughs> where people calling themselves artists, right? A lot of them are talented. You know, they have the voice. They may have the stage presence. But I believe that you become an artist when it is you, one, see yourself as a business, two, you're honest with yourself, and you're able to outsource persons to do things for you that you yourself can't do, and you're able to form a team of persons to help you along that musical career journey, right? Once it is you don't you don't grasp once it is you don't grasp or operate in that business aspect, you are talent, ma'am. Take a seat, right? <laughs> take a take a you seat. Don't need a manager. You don't you do not you do not need a manager. You do not need a manager, right? Mm -hmm. And once it is you really want to see more coming out of your music career, you, then you really need to tap into seeing yourself as a business. And in seeing yourself as a business, you create that artist career plan that will basically do a SWOT analysis of yourself, mm -hmm. a SWOT analysis of the manager, state the vision of the artist, state the mission of the artist, state the budgetary um, aspect for the artist, the marketing promotional plans, the target audience, very specific, mm -hmm. so that you can operate and have that guidance as, as an artist. This is the way forward, and this is how we're going to map out. Yeah, you're going to know what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, when you're going to do it. Right. I mean, we see persons who we love, you know, internationally, and you're wondering how, they, how they're doing it. Some of them, yeah, they have a record label. Some of them, yeah, they have a team. But uh, most importantly, a lot of them have a plan. Right. What we have is a lot of artists or talents, you know, releasing music and hoping for the best. Right. And, and I assume as well that a lot of that plan is going to look at establishing your different revenue streams. Yes. And uh, probably doing a full overhaul of their personal branding. Correct. Um, yeah. In terms of audits. Correct. That would be carried out. Yeah. Right? Okay. So another area that I want to look at is the marketing and promotion. Mm. Now, from where I sit and... Um, I am heavily entrained in the, in the gospel industry. Not a lot of people know that right. <laughs> either. My father is a pastor, so okay, I'm very okay. well <laughs> entrained in it. Um, in terms of what is available when it comes to marketing and promotion, now the traditional other artists, they would look at the TV, they would look at radio, mm -hmm. they would look at the social media, they would look at digital advertising and a bunch of other things to add to their marketing mix. Looking at just traditional alone at this point, when it comes to radio and television, there are only, what, two, three radio stations in Trinidad, one yeah. in Tobago. Three in Trinidad, one in Tobago, yeah. And then, uh, of course, the TV stations most of the times don't I'll feature gospel artists unless it's around Easter or Christmas. Or Christmas, yeah. They, they theme it to the holidays. Yep. So how, how do you navigate that space? 
So Melissa Jimenez, my artist, whose stage name is what? I don't know. Can't remember his stage that? name. All right. MJ. So my question <laughs> that we could work with that MJ. <laughs> um, my question would be, what does your audience know about you? Right? What does your audience know about you? Because when it comes to marketing and promotions, right now, number one, you don't want to strictly depend on radio and television. We are at a point now where when it comes to marketing and promotions, it is easier when it is the artists can connect with, the, with their audience or the audience can connect with the artist, right? Yes, your audience already know that you can sing or you can create music, but what else does your audience know about you? So that when it's time for you to market your song or your event or so forth, that they can connect and you know, really sell out your event, right? So at this point, at that, on that topic, I try to emphasize to artists that you can't go dead just like that. I say that you need to have that relationship. You need to form a relationship with your audience mm -hmm. when it comes to marketing and promotions. I want to say relationships. Let's say, okay, you have a boyfriend. Is it that you will not talk to the person for days? Is it that you <laughs> won't tell the person certain things? I mean, it's not that serious, but as an artist, towards your target audience, you need to form that connection with them. And during this time where a lot of things are virtual and online, I mean, it shouldn't take that much of an energy. Like, does your, does your target audience know what you eat? What is your favorite movie? What, it's, what is um, your favorite song on your album? I mean, and the thing is, when it is you ask them certain questions and you engage with your target audience, they are the ones who more or less tell you what kind of content to create. That they want. The content that they want, right? So when it comes to marketing, your audience should always be like one of the top priorities. Yes, it will have the radio stations. Yes, it will have the, um, the t television sta stations that may be seasonal and stuff like that. But there are different avenues, and one of the main ways is through your target audience. They are the ones who would really push what it is you want to sell. So building a relationship with your fan base is important. Definitely. In, in order to inform your creative content. Definitely. And even your music. They will tell you what, what they want what and what they, they don't want. Exactly. But a lot of right. them are leaving a lot of opportunities and money on the table because they refuse to engage or they lack engaging with their audience. Right. Yeah. Right. And uh, in terms of... Um, so... How do you treat with artists that do positive music? So mm. most of the artists that I've come across that say they do positive music is because they're actually gospel artists. But because they're trying to tread both worlds, mm. they do positive music, what they call positive music. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't necessarily reference God, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you know, the intent is there mm -hmm. behind that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, of course, again, they want to... They well, know. again, they need to be honest with themselves. Um, artists that sing positive music, that, that's fine with me. I'm a person, honestly, I love all kind of music. A lot, I love a lot of, a lot of genre music. And um, the artists themselves, if it is you want to cross over or you want to balance, then that's solely on you. I know positive, for example, like, he would have had the opportunity to sing positive music. The deal was to not mention God's name in the song at all. And he was hot with himself. When I say hot, what we know is, <laughs> is honest, open, and transparent, right. right? And he said, no. He said, no, you have that option. You have that choice. You have that choice. And he decided to say no to that deal and continue singing you know, his gospel music and making sure that he prays and raised the name of God. Right, and there are other artists who they try, they not try, but they intentionally leave it. That's, that's their personal, that's their personal mm -hmm. choice. How I deal with it is once it is you're honest and you don't feel any sort of conviction with it, then fine. All right, you just yeah. forward, whatever, back or never. Yeah. All right. 
So then that also brings to light um, the, the, the issue of some artists performing in supposedly secular spaces, mm -hmm. right? I'm saying supposedly secular spaces. Right. So, for example, I know many years ago there was the issue. I used to work with a local radio station, gospel station at that point in time. And uh, this artist, J.D., mm -hmm. J.D. decided he was going to jump out and go and perform in, um, I'm trying to remember if it was Soka Monarch or if it was one of the Calypso tents or something, oh. something within the carnival. Fire and thing. brimstone. And uh, listen, <laughs> the gospel community Fire and brimstone. him over the coals left, Mercy. right, and center. But for me, sitting down there, mm. and I am very confused mm. because I'm like, but why? He not changing the message in his song. Right. He's being very honest right. in the message of his song. Is He's not adapting it to suit carnival or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So why can't he enter the competition? Why can't he take part in this? And then if you look at it, in my perspective, if you look at it from the biblical side of things, the message is for you to go out go there out and, and preach all the nations. word mm -hmm. to all nations. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So if that is the case, why am I going to church every Sunday for JD to stand up on the stage and sing to me, who supposedly have God already? I'm supposed to be going outside mm -hmm. and be preaching to the nations. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, but what's the problem here? He doing things that people are afraid to do. I'm like, what's right. the problem there? So I know something similar happened with Jaren the other day. We, yeah, we, and but you know what came to mind too as well? When you go to the hospital, you see sick people, not people who are well. Exactly. You know, so that's what the church is for. And we fail to recognize that we are the church and we're supposed to go and, and really preach and reach to those persons. When it came to Jaron, I remember when he sang a gospel song on the can can rhythm, which is a secular because I mean once you hear the can can rhythm, you're thinking you're thinking black so one of the secular artists, mm -hmm. right? And when he sang that song, well, oh my gosh, what manner of controversy was this going <laughs> on in the gospel <laughs> music industry? And it took a while to really like marinate. And you know, persons would have said, you know, it's always had the people. I'm not gonna listen to this artist again because mm -hmm. of X, Y, and Z I'm not gonna and then fed up came about. I, and I remember being at work on that day, and he had the whole countdown and everything. He promoted that he was going to do the song. And I remember seeing the visuals for the song, and I was like, this is it. Like, this is it. This is it here. Like, it was just top quality. The message was, it, I mean, he could have done no wrong with that song. <laughs> and lo and behold, because at that point in time, the pattern the practice was i have a song to release let me go into the radio station go and promote my song and hope that they share it and it, and it blew up but jaron took it on the back end where he released it on youtube and the entire his whole target audience which was a lot of young people who could have related to the um what is song um prince Swanee and mm -hmm. and all of them <laughs> and everybody does end up it pushed beyond the radio stations, the gospel radio stations, and went all, and he ended up being invited to a lot of secular events. And uh, I mean, the gospel industry had no choice than to more or less accept it. I mean, because it didn't only speak to them, but it also spoke to us, you know? And uh, I mean, it just goes to show the power of reaching and uh, impacting your target audience. Mm -hmm. You understand? It didn't. And then the interviews came after. <laughs> and then the interviews came after. He pushed it on, right. online. You understand? So, I mean, it just goes to show that there are more than one avenue. There, there are more than one ways in which it is you can market and promote yourself as an artist. Exactly. And uh, as you say, Prince Swanee there, what, what it is this called? The gospel, the gospel version is Trini, Trini Good? Trini, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you see a lot of artists, and this is what happens when it is you don't have an artist's career plan. You, you, you don't have a, a niche. You don't have a uniqueness about you as an artist. You're not too sure as to what it is, the message that you want to get out there. But what's trending right now is you're training bad artists. So you jump on the scene as a gospel artist and you call it Trini Good. Mm. 
right? And uh, it is confusing now to your target audience because we are familiar with the worship and you know, and but when it is I hear the, the rhythm that the song that the song about God is on, it is confusing me because I don't know you to be this way as an artist. Right. You know, so your artist your your audience picks up quickly. So that's why you really need to be um honest, honest. and real with them because once it is you're not authentic, they pick up on that. So before I go into the juicy topic of, you know, the tabooness behind the gospel <laughs> industry, right? So, you know, the things people don't like, like to, to talk about mm, and bring to life. We'll see. Um, you mentioned worship there just now. So a few months ago, I actually put up a post on my Facebook account asking, you know, well, why is it that local gospel artists don't do worship music? I'm like, I love worship music. You mentioned Jonathan McReynolds. I play Jonathan McReynolds every single morning mm -hmm. without fear. Yeah, Candice Clayton, who is one of our Spotlight Artists alumni, and al alum, sorry, mm -hmm. and she has a gospel song there that is on that playlist mm -hmm. that I have with Jonathan, and I will listen to that over yeah. and over. But when I'm Much looking less? for local gospel mm -hmm. worship, mm -hmm. not the jump up and dog, dance, you know, praise part of it, and like, I want the worship songs, and I yeah. can't find any. The and the thing don't is, play. they play the foreign music. They play the foreign music, and what you see too, as well, you know how see how soca music is seasonal as well in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. The same thing happens in the gospel industry. Sad to say, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so they know that it have camps coming up, so they will plan for camp caravan and around right after you know they pass Christmas and they do all the Christmas songs and stuff like that. They will start singing some soca gospel for the January, mm -hmm. February, March, and when it comes to the worship music. And I am always so amazed because when I go to their, gospel, to their, um, their album launches, the number one song is like a, a, a worship song, right? The number one song on their tracks is like a worship song. And the song is always so good. But strange enough, on the gospel radio stations, you don't hear it no. as often. You know your money in my hair, like in the middle of the in the middle of the night. <laughs> in the middle of the night or really, really early in the morning. And I well and I'm thinking, well, why are they adapting the same? Because on secular radio stations, you may hear some gospel, gospel music, music early in the morning. in the morning. But I'm thinking, but this is gospel music. And this is a gospel radio station. So why not play the worship music anytime? You know, but um, and even yeah. the churches, the churches use the foreign songs. Yeah, they, use they pull the up on the slides and you know the projectors, and it's always the foreign worship songs. I'm like, I'm looking but for the local worship on a, songs. On a them. good note, what I see happening is that that narrative is changing. I see Mark Isaacs now. He is on a project um, powered by Cillian International, where he's. He's doing a whole every, I think it's once every two weeks or so, mm -hmm. he's dropping worship songs, strictly covers and originals, mm -hmm. right? I'm um, seeing a lot of um, local gospel artists coming out with their worship and hymns as well. So that's good. So that's good. And I love the fact that they're not solely dependent on radio stations to go promote and market their songs. They're doing it on their, on their, on their platforms. Well, I hope they take up the challenge that I post to them. <laughs> I would love to see more gospel, gospel worship, worship happening yeah. and I would love to see the churches using the local Good. gospel worship. Yeah. Again I'm saying worship, not praise necessarily. The yeah. Worship songs. Yeah. You know? So back to the juicy table topics. Yeah. Juicy. So how can I start it off? So one of my things that, that sort of irks me. Um so I know the gospel industry operates very differently um, to other sectors, right? And like one of the scenarios is where, that I don't quite understand, is where the pastor is the one that has to give permission mm -hmm. to me, the artist, to be an artist and mm -hmm. perform. And if they don't release me to do what God gave me the gift to do, mm -hmm. then I can't do it. Yeah. 
Um, I remember my first encounter with that because I belong to a faith. I'm some of the Adventists. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, we just like totally different to that of the Pentecostals and so forth. But being a seven day Adventist artist manager, being among the circle of the Pentecostals, that was when I was introduced or, or, be, or found out about that aspect of the artist. And I remember when I started, that, started to assess Curtis with the Caribbean Gospel Music Tour, there was this one um, person at this point in time. She was, she was new and upcoming, but she was absolutely, absolutely talented. Like, beautiful voice like right now she's not even local anymore she is living in Canada or in the UK somewhere out there right or because of her voice mm -hmm. and uh, so we are planning okay we have the listing of all the artists that are going on tour X Y and Z and so forth one day I heard well this person not going okay so why isn't this person going we have the funds whatever the pastor said she isn't ready as yet and I'm like what <laughs> Sorry, I'm not supposed to laugh. Sorry. The pastor isn't ready <laughs> yet. But I'm a very respectable person. Mm -hmm. And things that I don't understand, I try to understand. Right. <coughs> right. And a lot of them do have the strong belief that, you know, the pastor is the one who will give them that covering. He's a shepherd. So He's they, a they, shepherd. They, they're trusting him to yeah. guide and lead. To guide and lead and to more or less um, give them that guidance, that instruction as to what it is they should and shouldn't do. So I said, oh, and I accepted that. I said, okay. But um, artist, not all of them are like that. Mm -hmm. But most of them are. And uh, I respect that. And they are the ones who can say, okay, if it is they want to do something or not. But I mean, a lot of them, they do obey what it is they are told. And the to sad do. thing about that for me is that I've watched so many of them go through that rigor that they become stifled. Mm. And again, if God gave you this ability and he gave you this gift and he wants you to be that minister in song, then, you know, my next question, if my pastor was to tell me that, I'll be like, okay, fine, you're supposed to be the shepherd, you're leading your flock, you know, you're guiding, whatever. What do I have to do I was asking him that because I mm -hmm. both face, right? <laughs> so what do I have to do in order to be able to get to that point where you would release me to do this? But not many people as bold faced as I am. Oh, that okay. is, so they'll just be like, okay, well, pass the sea because we know we love to say pass the sea, pass the sea, pass the sea. Right. So you can't do nothing. Right. Right. Melissa. Like, no. Well, what, is that, what it is I would say is that in as much as you know that you have a shepherd and a leader here, mm -hmm. um, and Consulting with them is important. I also believe that consulting with God is important exactly. because we do have that openness. We do have that opportunity to speak to him directly, mm -hmm. right? I would share my testimony because, like again, I said I stumbled into the gospel music industry through the whole events and stuff like that. And then when persons um, recognized that Aspire Agency was a thing, like it was my thing in my church, mm -hmm. um, it wasn't solely accepted. I mean, my pastor isn't one to say, yeah, you could have this business or not. That's not how it runs in the um, Seventh-day Adventist church. Mm -hmm. But I remember members saying, I feel you're working with um, Pentecostals and this and that and Aspire Agency. <laughs> because when you go on Aspire Agency, oh, you're seeing all these events, mm -hmm. all these events from all these different artists and you're seeing all, and all of that. And based on how it looks because of all the lights and the stage and everything, I feel you're da, da, da. And it's a Shushuana, you know, and I paid no mind to it until 2019, 18, when Cillian had their first um, Gospel Music Awards. Mm -hmm. And um, a spy agency was nominated, and um, I asked the church, I said, oh, can it be announced in church that a spy agency is nominated for Gospel Manager of the Year? If it is, you know, person from the church could, you know, jump on and support. Absolutely. Oh, no. Right? So, fast forward to 2019, because we were nominated three times. All right, so 2020, 19. All right, so the first um, Gospel Music Awards was in 2018. Mm -hmm. But the band was also nominated as well. And because the band is made up of young persons, and we have a, a lot of us, <coughs> 
they end up winning an, an award. So that, was, so that was good. But because of my passion and drive and, and stuff like that, I was nominated in 18, 19, 20 came about. Mm -hmm. And uh, a spy agency won gospel manager of the year. So, so by then, you know, everybody kind of falling and, all right, da 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 da. And you know who made the most noise? Oh. The, the person from my church. Mm. The person from my church. <laughs> and, and it just goes to show that sometimes you really have to have that connection and that communication with God. And when it is, he says to go or to continue, you need to. You don't question it. You don't question you don't. it. <laughs> you, don't, you don't go to a man to ask, should I? You know, because you don't know who can be blessed because you made a decision to say, yeah, let me continue, even if it's one person. Correct. You know, so. Correct. Yeah. So, so which moves on to taboo topic number two, <clears throat> this thing about churches not wanting to pay gospel artists oh, to perform. And musicians. Because they view it as, and musicians, because they view it as ministry, right? <laughs> mm. There's not only job, there's ministry to the church, so... Uh -uh. Right. You know, unless in the case of like, um, I know like like some of those very, very large churches like Open Bible mm -hmm. and stuff, you know, they have their set worship team and mm -hmm. I think I think some of them get stipended and stuff like that. We ain't talking about that. That's right. We're talking about <coughs> you having some big Brahm event or whatever, whatever, and because the artist goes to your church, they, they need to give back. <laughs> I don't know how much give back they want them to do, and it is every year, every Bruh. Sunday that they want them to give back, but that's their job. Mm. So why not pay them for it? No, and again, remember I said I'm an advocate for artists seeing themselves as a business, mm -hmm. right? And artists need to make that clear to their churches as well. The thing is, when it is you in church, if it is you an artist attending a church and you are serving through your music as, as ministry, fine, no problem. It is up to you as a servant of God that you want to do something free. I mean, because I serve in church all the time. You know, I'm not an artist. I just, you know, mm -hmm. do what I have to do. And I don't ask for payment because I understand that I am doing this on behalf of God, right. off of my own free will. But do not tell me that the church is having a, um, a concert or like um, a Christmas banquet and you want me to come and sing for free. I right. mean, even if that is the case, I mean, be polite about it now. Be a, be a little systematic about and it. And I will politely tell you my fee. <laughs> and that, you know. You know, and um, I feel at least have the respect and also understand that this artist, this person have value as well. Because a lot of times, even outside of the church, it might be another um, Christian event promoter. They want persons or artists to come to their event. They're not taking into consideration. This person have to get close to come to the event. This person have to rent a studio to rehearse to come to my event. This person have to pay for transportation. This person have to makeup. eat before. Makeup, a lot of the women, I mean, come on. I mean, and persons are just a lot of, they're very inconsiderate when it comes to booking artists, you know, free. I mean, free in the gospel industry is, uh, I mean, <laughs> it is abused. It is more like an abuse. Yeah, I'm sorry. This statement I'm going to make probably not um, kosher for this segment. Oh, but boy. It is over like, oh, boy. Like, why, why, why you have to do this over and over and over? And over. Yeah. At what point do you stop taking advantage? This the know? thing, and the thing is to make that change, have to start with, one, the artists, the artist managers, the booking agents. You know, we need to understand that because the thing is what it is you allow is what will continue. Correct, correct. And some so. of them, some of the artists, especially in the gospel industry, some of them don't have a, a, a eight-hour job. They don't have a job. This is their bread and butter. Correct. So. Correct. So anything else in that taboo mix that I missed? I mm. think those are the two glaring ones to me. <laughs> no, I think, I think that's good. Yeah. yeah. So. So let's move to some actionable quick tips and then we <coughs> will wrap up there. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so what are some key takeaways that you can give persons, whether it be young artists, managers coming mm -hmm. into this thing, wanting to explore, or um, even the artists looking for managers who actually have things to manage? Um, looking for managers. <laughs> 
Uh, what I would say is how you do anything is how you do everything, right? Whether it is you are an artist manager, a booking agent, or an artist, how you do anything is how you're going to do everything. And that's something that I try to tell the artists that I work with. If it is you know that you are a lazy person, but, but yet you're passionate about music, they are going to have certain aspects of the majority of things that you're going to do is going to be lazy because you procrastinate and a lot you are inconsistent and um that that's that's key for managers and for artists as well time is important manage your time well um be patient be patient be patient this this um journey is not an, an easy one and it's not for the week be patient <laughs> and um in seeing yourself as a business this one is specifically for the artists themselves mm -hmm. you need to educate yourself education is so important and uh, i know in the music industry you'll have various aspects that you would want to really get your hands on but it pays to at least know a little bit of everything so that if persons are to come into the picture to assist you they don't take advantage of you mm -hmm. right so look at educate yourself and invest in yourself and learn about the legal aspects of the music industry study the administrative aspect the social media aspects because as an independent artist for a period of time you're going to have to do a lot of things for yourself mm -hmm. right before the whole manager comes into the picture before you get a publicist into the picture you know a social media manager a lot of these things you have to do for yourself so it pays to invest in yourself and learn about the music industry and i'm saying the music industry because you as the artist you are the business Without you, the music industry, they can't really go that far. So see yourself as a business first, so that when the industry comes, you can more or less flow because you have a plan and everything in place. Exactly. It sounds like a plan right there. And I will continue to harp on your statement that they are a business and they really, yeah. really need to start acting like it yeah, for and real. start operating that way. Yeah. And of course, that key takeaway of self-investment, yes. which a lot of them don't like to do. You see this? Correct. Woe be unto me. I don't really want to take on the business side. I just want to sing. Oh, I just yes. want to write. I just want to this. That's it. You know. No, but why invest so much money into songwriting, mixing, mastering, recording? Well, hardly any, any into it marketing. It's an expensive hobby, if that's the case. It's an expensive <laughs> hobby. That is it. That is it. <laughs> that is it. No, no, but why? Because, I mean, it goes hand in hand. You need to have that business aspect, and you need to so also see about your art as well. And you have to know what level you want to reach. Is it that you, you, you want to sing for weddings and birthdays and corporate functions? Yeah. Or is it that yeah. you want to be the next Jonathan McReynolds mm -hmm. and, uh, and Kirk Franklin. And, and the thing is, all the these people. persons, they would have taken a lot of time. They would have taken a lot, it would have taken a lot of strategy and planning to reach there. Yesterday, somebody would have, um, I did a post on um, a spy agency on the electronic press kit. And a, a young aspiring artist, she messaged and she said, um, is that separate our website? And I looked at it and I said, um, that's why I am here, you understand? Because I understand that not everybody is going to, to know certain things. And because you don't know, I believe that my purpose is to serve by helping you know. Yes, an electronic press kit is different to our website, because this is the purpose that our website serves, and this is the purpose that our electronic press kit serves, you understand? And um, just being curious and asking questions can get you so far. You know, I mean, everybody don't know everything about everything, but a few persons or everybody know a little bit about something. So just engage in networking and, and sharing with people can, you know, do a lot for you as an artist. Correct, correct, correct. So if you all wrap this up now. And thank you so, 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 You're so much for joining us. This was a very engaging conversation, yes, as I was. knew it would be. So um, we appreciate you taking time out of your day to be here with no problem. us. So thank you so much. You're welcome. And thank you so much for having me here. I truly count it an honor and a privilege being here with Music TT. I must say that you're doing amazing work thank for you. um, 
artists who is in the independent artists hi and um, good day sort of everyone thank you so much for joining us i am going to answer your questions at this point in time so the first question i saw was how would you advise artists to go about identifying their target audience so I'm going to give you three ways in which you can identify your target audience. Collaborate, network, and be seen. Think about it. Collaboration. You as an artist would know what genre of music or the type of audience even that you would love to attract. So with that knowledge, collaborate with artists who are similar to that or who can also attract um, an audience to you. So if it is you know that you love conscious music or you like doing reggae music, look for similar or likewise artists to collaborate with because then their audience most likely would become your audience. The second um, I, um, way that you can attract your audience is through, of course, networking. Your network is your net worth, <laughs> right? Always remember that. Reach out to persons who, um, whom can give value to you and who you can give value to, of course, right? So um, network, network, network. And when I say network, you don't necessarily have to network with artists alone. You can network with different persons within the um, music industry that can that can more or less contribute to you as an artist you never know what a videographer a photographer a producer can do for you so reach out and form those authentic relationships and sure enough it can lead you down to the avenue of attracting your audience and finally Get seen as an artist. The best way to get up to build an audience is to put yourself in front of an audience. If you're not waking up every day and one of your goal is to put yourself in front of as many people as possible, then you're not doing enough as an artist. That is supposed to be a goal because, I mean, without an audience, then who is going to really um, listen, contribute, or share, or more or less buy your music right so um yes collaborate network and most importantly um try to get yourself out there be seen go and get more gigs there's social media you can literally put yourself out there by creating quality content and once people see quality content again that's an attraction people are going to be attracted to you. And I strongly believe in being very authentic. Be your authentic self and you are going to captivate and draw your tribe, your audience, right? So those are the ways in which you can identify and pull on and build your target audience, right? The second question I'm seeing here, yes, Carla. Do you think it's harder to manage a gospel artist in terms of potential clients, promote, promoters, asking for free performances or as charity towards a fundraising church event? I don't think it's harder. I mean, because again, being honest, that is the reality. It's not like you don't know, right? You know the, the circle, you know the audience that you, you're basically going to be um working with right so it's not harder but as a manager or as an artist again you need to see yourself as a business and once it is you know your stance once it is you know your um your worth or your operation as an artist you should be able to say well yes i can do this or no i can't do this because the reality is when you keep saying yes 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 as an artist, you are one going to be devalued, you're going to be, be taken advantage of, and three, um, you're just going to be drained without even getting any profit at all from it. So um, it's only going to be harder if it is you, you, you're not 
focused or you have that um courage that that courage to say no right because you know your worth and you know the amount of work that you put in just just to produce at their event right so again just be straightforward and it should be smooth um sailing right um right. discussion thank you all so much for the feedback right i'm seeing here what is an electronic press kit <laughs> well first let's go electronic so it's a digital document right press more or less it um encapsulates the important the highlights of you as an artist so electronic press kit is a is an electronic or digital document that showcases you or in that showcases you as an artist in a brief format right you it gives your biography your your repertoire which is your list of songs um music videos if it is you would like to have that attached and of course your contact information so anytime an event promoter wants quick information on an artist let's say for the reason of adding them to a cast you might want to propose or your manager might want to propose yourself you send this electronic press kit to that person and they re review it quickly right it's almost like a, a resume for an artist right and they review it and based on that they then they make a decision so of course it's really um important that your um website and contact information is attached to that document as well right what's your take <laughs> what's your take on secular artists singing gospel are those songs recognized by gospel artists my take so everyone is entitled to their opinion um i think music is for everyone right if a secular artist decides to sing gospel music fine um are those songs recognized by gospel artists i think that is solely dependent on who receives it i think i can't say that everyone receives it and i can't say that no one receives it right um there are songs that i know that are sung by secular artists and i love it you know and there are songs that are sung by secular artists gospel songs and um i may or may not pay too much mind to it based on the brand or maybe the sound of the song right so that's subjective right question again right why won't gospel radio station play some secular positive music i cannot answer that because that's their company and of course each company would have their own values and standards right and uh, I, I i guess based on what they plan or what it is they want to portray or may or may not want to allow that is just how it it, it goes right um you're welcome mariella and last the last question i'm seeing here is okay how will i know when i need a, a manager versus a booking agent all right so one of the first red flags as to when it is you with me need a, a manager or a booking agent is when your work becomes overwhelming overwhelming and point to note a manager is different from a booking agent however an individual can um do both functions right um if it is you an artist and uh, you recognize that your music is getting out there and it's taking you places and it's you're getting more gigs and you, it's getting out of hand it's it's becoming time consuming automatically you should know that you need a booking agent to help you with the bookings for your, with your gigs right if you are an artist and of course you would have you, you you built your brand and everything and audience are attracted you have a, a very good audience and your music is getting out there and you recognize that you're ready to take it to another level you need a manager right to help manage those aspects of your growth as an artist um a question here from caribbean riot music any thoughts on the best ways to organize tours overseas yes 
I would say again, you need to reach out, network, and um, collaborate. The internet has made it so easy and just made the world a whole lot smaller. You look for persons who are um, interested. They look for persons online who are along the same interest as you, and you try your best as possible to get in contact with them them right and of course there is an option as to where it is you can actually create your own tour to go overseas and it doesn't have to be anything huge right you can start small and it can grow over time another question is what do you think is the most common mistake made sorry what do you think is the most common mistake green gospel what do you think is the most common mistake Green gospel. Hmm, I'm not too sure. Okay. What do you think is the most common mistake green gospel artists make? Okay. <laughs> I saw the second question. Definitely not thinking themselves, taking themselves as a business. Period. Um, when they come into the gospel music industry, what happens a lot of the time is because they have a great voice, they have that talent. So they, the, the number one focus tends to be to portray and market themselves out there as much as possible. But then when they get that audience and they get that, that traction, the whole business mindset to it disappears or it doesn't even appear at all. So again, a plan isn't in place. So the number one mistake is not having a plan in the first place yet venturing out into the music industry because then when all these things come to you you're like wait hold up what am i supposed to do now the thing is you're supposed to have that plan so that in the event it happens you know what the next step is right so um yes the, the number one mistake is not having a plan and seeing yourself as a business and operating as such right okay Tips on the best tip on in, on the best marketing strategy as a new upcoming artist with a song that's getting popular quickly. Be consistent. Be consistent. Be consistent. Consistency work. And uh, if it is you, as you're saying here in this question, with a song that's getting popular quickly, ride that wave. Create content with it in such a way that you can engage your audience to to be a part of that journey and that marketing um and that marketing plan with you right and be consistent in sharing that content and engaging with them i i truly admire that of um i think a lot of persons would know young brother i mean that's despite the fact of the um the 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 <laughs> the not, not the quality but the the type of music right but um he engages so much and he and he keeps his audience you know on on their tours same with voice and they you know so when it is your marketing try your best as possible to keep your audience engaged especially if it's with a song and be consistent in marketing that song are you managing anyone at the moment or anyone you would like to work with? All right, so one, besides being um, the CEO of Aspire Agency, I also have a job, right? That is very time consuming at the moment. So unfortunately, I'm not managing anyone at this point in time. Um, in regards to Anyone I would love to work with or like to work with? Yes, there are a few persons I would love to work with and uh, I would definitely love like, to get back a little bit, not much, into doing events. So yes. Will you be working with any international artists such as, um, as you did with Mac Reynolds, like Map City, etc.? Who knows what the future holds, but I will love to venture into that um if not now hopefully soon in the future right so thank you all so much for engaging all these questions i do hope that you enjoyed today's um series webinar series um courtesy music tt reverb
right? Um, and I do look forward to seeing a lot more webinar series from Music TT. I think it was a great, it is a great initiative. And I look forward to the other um, guests that would be featured on this webinar series. And I also look forward to seeing you again um, in the comments, of course, right? So thanks again for joining and do enjoy the rest of your evening.